You're listening to the Northamptonshire Carers Podcast. Well, we are almost there. Merry Christmas. It's the Northamptonshire Carers first Christmas podcast. And on this episode, then there's nothing that's of a more serious nature. It's all much uh, more light-hearted with a seasonal flavour to it, but also recognising the fact that Christmas and the New Year period isn't great for everybody. So we'll be enjoying some Christmas poems from a number of colleagues across the organisation. There might even be one that I read myself. And as well as that, some field recordings, as I like to call them, from uh, a number of music groups that happen in association with Northamptonshire Music and Performing Arts Trust, MPAT, uh, which is the Carers' Choir and the Young Carers' Monday Night Music Club and the ukulele group, which happens here at Northamptonshire Carers on a Friday. So we'll have really a bit of a flavour of what happens there and about the process of making music. It's not all about absolute perfection. It's about seeing how people get to where they get to with music making and creativity and the enjoyment that comes from that. Very, very happy Christmas season to everybody listening to our Northamptonshire Carers podcast. My name is Catherine James Oliver and I have been asked to read a poem by Benjamin Zephaniah and it's called Talking Turkeys and dedicated to Prince and Sheba. Be nice to your turkeys this Christmas. Cause turkeys just wanna have fun. Turkeys are cool, turkeys are wicked, and every turkey has a mum. Be nice to your turkeys this Christmas. Don't eat it, keep it alive. It could be your mate, and not on your plate. Say, yo turkey, I'm on your side. I got lots of friends who are turkeys, and all of them fear Christmas time. They want to enjoy it. They say humans destroyed it, and humans are out of their mind. Yeah, I got lots of friends who are turkeys. They all have a right to a life, not to be caged up and genetically made up by any farmer and his wife. Turkeys just want to play reggae. Turkeys just want to hip hop. Can you imagine a nice young turkey saying, I cannot wait for the chop. Turkeys like getting presents. They want to watch Christmas TV. Turkeys have brains and turkeys feel pain in many ways like you and me. I once knew a turkey called Turkey. He said, Benji, explain to me, please. Who put the turkey in Christmas? And what happens to Christmas trees? I said, I am not too sure, turkey, but it's nothing to do with Christ's math. Humans get greedy and waste more than need be, and business make loads and loads of cash. So be nice to your turkey this Christmas. Invite them indoors for some greens. Let them eat cake and let them partake in a plate of organic grown beans. Be nice to your turkey this Christmas and spare them the cut of the knife. Join Turkeys United and they'll be delighted and you will make new friends for life. (laughs) Hope you enjoyed that. Remember the time of year when the future appears like a blank sheet of paper, a clean calendar, and you chant on thick white snow, you vow fresh fr- footprints, then watch them go with the wind's hearty gust. Fill your glass, is to us, promises made to be broken, made to last. That's such a great poem. Thanks to my colleague here at Northampton Shakira, John Quirk, reading Jackie Kay's poem promise and of course before that Catherine James Oliver one of the podcast team here amongst uh, other things and uh, reading a poem from late Benjamin Zephaniah called Talking Turkeys 
kind of interesting in the sense that the day that that poem was recorded by by Catherine for this this podcast episode, the very next day, we learned of the the, the death of Benjamin Zephaniah. So it's kind of tribute to uh, to him. And next we have one of our first field recordings. This is from the Adult Carers Choir that meets on a Monday morning in term time here at Northampton Carers. The ukulele group begins and then the Carers Choir from 10.30 until 12. So let's uh, hand over to them. Thanks to Natasha and all of the members of the Carers Choir for that seasonal song. And let's hear another poem. This time it's from Emma. Driving Home for Christmas by Roger McGough. I'm driving home for Christmas following a star. I'm driving home for Christmas in a stolen car. Trains have been cancelled, failed my driving test. Found a car with keys in, you can guess the rest. Pop songs on the radio as traffic cops appear. Sirens growing louder, drowning out Chris Rear. Driving home case. for Christmas. You're <laughs> 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 no, not for that in. If you ever read any of John Hegley's poems, you'll know he can be very funny, but also make some really good points and can be quite poignant at times. So we've got John, this time reading uh, a second poem from John Hegley's Beyond Our Kennel collection and a poem called Some Resolutions. Some resolve to give up all the smoking, some resolve to cut out all the meat, some resolve to get their trunks more regularly soaking, and some resolve to stop all the deceit. Some resolve to solve financial problems by taking up a life involving crime, and some resolve to give their aging parents more than just a fag end of the time. Some resolve to have a hobby. Some resolve to join a lobby. Some resolve to clear up every jobby that the doggy does. And not go hosepipe crazy in the drought. And some of the aforesaid resolutions dissolve before the Christmas trees been put outside the door especially resolutions one and four. And the second now of our recordings from our music groups here at Northampton Carers, And this is the Young Carers Monday Music Club that meets between 4.30 and 5.30 during term time on the Monday. And we'll hear the kind of creative process for a song that they wrote and were practising prior to a performance at the 
Christmas concert at St. Michael's Church in uh, Abington in Northampton. And after that, a conversation with Rebecca, who's the leader of, uh, of the Monday Night Music Club and works for uh, Empat, which she can say a lot better than me. Look forward to hearing it. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
So I'm joined by Rebecca from, from <laughs> I can never say this, so say it for me. <laughs> NMPAT. Brilliant. Uh, I, I, I wanted you to say it because I knew I'd screw it up, really. Uh, been, been in uh, and really en en enjoyed sort of recording some stuff from the, the Monday Night Music Club. And I wonder if you'd tell us a little bit about that. So we meet um, every Monday evening with the young carers and make some music. And that can be in many shapes or forms. And we've played lots of different instruments over the time we've been running the group. Sometimes we focus on percussion, sometimes we're focusing more on orchestral or band instruments. Tonight we've had pianos and bass guitar, but we have often have violin, ukuleles, lots of different things. And it's just an opportunity to either create music or learn some pieces. Yeah, so the last few weeks um, we've been creating a piece of music which is led by the children, led by the young people themselves. Um, I'm just here to sort of piece that together, but it, it comes from them. So the words, the lyrics, they just came up with yeah. words about what Christmas means to them. We wrote these into a big list and they're now evolving into song lyrics, like snow is falling, here yeah. comes Santa. Yeah. Um, it's really lovely and Christmassy and the music as well is written by them. Even if they know a few notes, we're using those notes as like the basis for the song. So yeah. Yeah. everybody's involved, everyone gets to have a part in, in how they're making this piece, which is really nice. We've probably all got some creativity in us somewhere, but sometimes we don't find an opportunity to get that out. So it sounds like that very much is what, what happens at the, the, the group on Monday nights. Yeah, I think it's really important to give a little bit of empowerment to to people with music making. It helps in so many ways in confidence and well-being in the wider world as well. But if you can learn that through music, you can learn that you know you, the contribution you have to make is important. And if that can start in music and expand beyond there, that's that's great. That makes me happy. And just in case anybody is listening and kind of thinks, uh, oh, that sounds really, really interesting. That would be really good for, for my son and my da daughter. I'd really enjoy that. If, if the, 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 the times of when, when the, the session runs on a Monday. Yeah, so we meet on uh, Monday at Northampton Carers at Midland Road at 4.30 until 5.30. You can get in touch with 
probably Sarah at North Ants Carers and she'll put you in touch with the, the people. But yeah, just we've got spaces. Whether you can play an instrument, whether you've never played an instrument before, if you want to sing or bang a drum or anything, and anybody's welcome. And I've just sort of seen from, from my uh, time here that it's, it's very supportive and, 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 and relaxed, so nobody's going to feel awkward and everybody's able to, to sort of be engaged, aren't they? Definitely, and sometimes, you know, people, they want to be around music but don't necessarily want to play because that can be a big thing. We find lots of different roles like, you know, the behind the, sta- behind the scenes, backstage sort yeah. of roles. Um, when we've done, we did a performance at the castle earlier in the year and there was lots of, you know, we need the equipment moving around and it's all part of the process. So whether yeah. you want to be a performer or a songwriter or just help in the musical process, it's, there's lots of roles in music. So, so it gives an opportunity for everybody, if you don't want to be that front person or whatever, then you, then you don't have to do that, but you can actually be part of a kind of combined effort to, to, to creating something by the sound of it. And uh, thanks for your time telling us uh, all about it. Cool, thank you very much. This is the Northamptonshire Carers Podcast. And if you've ever called in to the office and spoken to one of our admin colleagues, then you probably at some point have spoken to Phil, who is going to read the next couple of poems for us. Reindeer Report, UA Fanthorpe. Chimneys colder, flight pass busier. Driver Christmas F, still baffled by postcodes. Children more. And stay up later, presents heavier. Pay frozen mission in spite of all this accomplished. Merry Christmas. Christmas 1970. A little girl called Silace Javote said, Look at all the lovely presents I've got. While a little girl in Biafra said, Oh, what a lovely slice of bread. Spike Milligan one might initially make you think, What was that all about? But it's actually making a point which I think is quite important given that Christmas is not great for everybody and it's kind of making that point around the fact that some people might get loads of presents at Christmas yet some people are living in countries or sets of circumstances where presents are possibly the last thing on their mind and it is maybe that slice of bread or something to eat or something to drink that might be more important and staying with with that, that thought really around the fact that for some people Christmas is a wonderful time and uh, has meaning in a religious sense, has a real sort of appeal in, in, in terms of having children, the sense of excitement that, that com- comes with that. Or you just might love that, that, that time of year and that's absolutely fine, of course. However, it's not necessarily that everybody finds Christmas for a variety of reasons, a particularly great time. So I wanted to talk about an alternative 12 days of Christmas, the 12 well-being days of Christmas that you might get something from that might assist you to navigate your way through the uh, tricky waters of uh, the festive season and into the new year. On the first day of Christmas, I gave a gift to me, letting go. I'm letting go of the perfect Christmas myth and appreciating that it exists only on the television and in my dreams. I'm going to work on enjoying this holiday with all its imperfections and chaos. On the second day of Christmas, I gave a gift to me asking for help. I don't have to do it all this Christmas and then feel overwhelmed and resentful. Instead, I'm giving myself permission to share the workload and to ask my family and friends for help. On the third day of Christmas, I gave a gift to me, no more pleasing. I'm giving up on the notion of trying to please everyone this Christmas. It's an unachievable and totally impossible task. On the fourth day of Christmas, I gave a gift to me, body acceptance. Every day I'm working on showing acceptance and gratitude for the body I have. I will stand tall, smile and wear clothes that I love on Christmas Day. 
On the fifth day of Christmas, I gave a gift to me of magic. If I'm spending time with young children, my own or otherwise, I'm going to pause to embrace the fun and wonder of Christmas through their eyes. On the sixth day of Christmas, I gave a gift to me of connection. I'm going to take care of myself if I feel lonely. I'll be proactive and reach out to friends, neighbours, family, or maybe I'll volunteer. I'll also be compassionate and self-caring towards myself if these things aren't possible right now. On the seventh day of Christmas, I gave a gift to me of humour. I'm working to see the funny side of things and remembering that humour can be a wonderful easer of tension. On the eighth day of Christmas, I gave a gift to me of no dieting. I'm not depriving myself or labelling foods as forbidden this Christmas, as I know this leaves me feeling miserable and more likely to binge or overeat later on. Instead, I'm going to eat with awareness and savour every scrumptious mouthful without guilt. On the ninth day of Christmas, I gave a gift to me of time out. I'm taking some time out for myself when things get hectic. I might go for a walk or take some fresh air. Maybe I'll go and read my new book for half an hour. On the 10th day of Christmas, I gave a gift to me of drink awareness. I'm choosing how much alcohol I drink, showing awareness for its effect on my mood and inhibitions. On the 11th day of Christmas, I gave a gift to me of valuing time. I'm not being pulled onto the material train, feeling pressurised to buy loads of stuff that we don't need and then worrying about paying it all off. I know that spending time with friends and family whilst creating memories is more important. On the 12th day of Christmas, I gave a gift to me of self-forgiveness. I'm regularly forgetting all the above and returning to my old ways of coping. However, I'm being kind to myself and showing self-forgiveness. Like everybody else, I'm a work in progress. I'm trying to keep perspective and remembering that Christmas Day is only one day of the year. I hope you get something from those, but the last one particularly resonates with me. Something I often say to other people, and sometimes in those slightly odd conversations we have with ourselves in our own head, I don't think it's just me that does that, then I sometimes think, well, I'm not always great at doing this, but I'll get better if I keep practising. What I'd also say is that Christmas is one day and if it's not easy for you then that one day has soon passed. It's a bit like George Harrison's song, Things Must Pass, that's <laughs> if you know that one. That's, um, so Christmas Day will be gone in a, a very, very short space of time. So if you enjoy it, have a great time on that day. If you find it more difficult or you're on your own or you're maybe missing people that, that uh, maybe have died in the last year or, or over many years ago, because it doesn't change, does it? Then it's one day and you'll get to the other side of it. And if you wanted some more helpful resources around Christmas and really sort of uh, finding your way through Christmas, if it's not great for you, if it has an impact on your well-being or your mental health, then the Mind website has quite a lot of useful information. And now we move to our final musical field recording. And this one from the Female Carers Ukulele Group, which takes place on a Friday morning. And you'll hear members of Northamptonshire Music and Performing Arts Trust, as well, of course, as the members of the choir that were in attendance on that day of recording, practising, ready for performing some music and song at the Northamptonshire Carers Christmas Concert at St Michael's Church in Northampton.
want to play the melody? Sure, sure. Very, very, very slowly. That's right. We both sure. said to ourselves very slowly. We can do it, but really. we can do it very slowly. So we're just doing the, the melody without chords. But. Should we do it on the tune? Should we on the tune? Should we play...
is Tasha, who also works alongside me for Community Companions half of the week, half of the week on the Carers Support Line. Alternative Santa by Roger McGuff. I'm fed up looking like Father Christmas, muttered Father Christmas one year. I need a new outfit. I must move with the times, so for a start, it's goodbye reindeer. He googled alternative Santas and was amazed at the stuff that appeared. He got rid of the holly red costume, had a haircut and shaved off his beard. Spent his days in front of a computer in a cave hollowed out of the ice, wearing a t-shirt emblazoned Merry Xmas and jeans and Amazon Armani half price. Couldn't wait to straddle his snowped, the bargain he'd bought on eBay. A rocket-powered silver toboggan, his supersonic sleigh. Then one morning he thought, oh, why bother delivering presents by hand when it could all be done online? Busy parents will understand. We are lucky to live in a digital age where the aim is access and speed. Santanet, I'll call the system. Santa faction, guaranteed. And that was years and years ago, times that children barely know. Midnight mass and mistletoe, Christmas carols and candle glow. Sleigh bells ringing across the snow and Santa singing yo ho ho. For that was years and years ago. And that was years and years ago. Party Night by UA Fanthorpe. Busiest night of the year. Six course corporate dinner. Everything's got to be okay. Coffee, mints, walnuts, wine. Wassail, as you might say. Saw at once they had to go, not the party spirit. Him, living on handouts, no doubt, her in the family way. Now I said to the wife, not this night of all nights. Wife's obstinate, typical. Bedded him down in the shed, in the straw. Quite envied him. Rushed off my feet as I was, slaving over the wine and the women. Miss what the wife says she saw, fireworks, singing, comets, royals. Well, she may have. What I say is... Who made the genuine profit that night? As they say on uh, all the best programmes. And finally, Cheryl from our admin team reading a poem from John Hegley. Christmas in the doghouse. It was Christmas Day in the doghouse and no one had a bone. And one dog who was desperate was chewing up the phone book. When suddenly, to their surprise, the canine Santa came, and luckily they had no logs, or he'd have been aflame. Good news I bring, the Santa said, because he knew how to speak. From now on I'll be visiting the doghouse once a week. We'll break the human habit they seem to hold so dear. Goodwill to fellow creatures, but only once a year. It's true we tend to urinate around the Christmas tree, but we're fit to lead and not be led in spreading Christmas glee. They didn't want a sermon, though. That's not why he was there. They all piled in like vermin to do his sack of Christmas fare. And they eated all the bones up, and they treated Santa rough. And as he left the doghouse, he said, once a year's enough. And that brings us to the concluding moments of this Christmas Northampton Shakeras podcast. Hope you've enjoyed it. Any feedback on this or any of the previous podcasts that run through 2023, always incredibly welcome. We'd like to know as well what works for you, what doesn't work for you, what you'd like to maybe look at uh, us covering on future podcasts in the words of Depeche Mode, whether we've got the balance right. Is it sort of good bit mix between more general lighter items and items that are more serious, informative nature. Are there enough carers on the podcast? Who else do you think we might talk to? All of those things would be great. And of course, if you feel that you would like to chat to me for a future podcast, or you know somebody that would, then that'd be great. We'd, we'd certainly be extraordinarily keen on uh, on doing that. You can get in touch on 01933 677 907 or you can email podcast at northamptonshire-carers.org and to end we've got a couple of song references for you if you like Christmas or if you find it a little bit more difficult 
So until next time, simply wishing you a wonderful Christmas time. Or if you're not so keen, then suddenly it's Christmas, which some might see as retail eternity. Goodbye. This podcast is created by Northamptonshire Carers and is a Man With A Beard production.